Hello everyone, I'm Tolan Bulaheni, and today I will briefly be presenting to you on critical race theory, or CRT. I'll specifically be speaking about CRT's key tenets and how an application of these tenets can help us critically think about structural forms of anti-black racism and the ways they structure HIV services and sustain access barriers for black communities in Ontario. The current public health response to HIV in Canada includes widespread distribution of life-saving treatment and novel biomedical prevention interventions. However, as this epidata from 2016 shows, Black communities continue to be disproportionately impacted by the HIV epidemic. American data suggests that structural racism results in delayed diagnosis and entry into care, poor treatment outcomes, and higher mortality rates for African Americans. While scientific literature emphasizes that structural anti-Black racism is strongly implicated in these HIV outcomes, there is currently limited research speaking to this within a Canadian context. CRT is a theoretical framework that fosters a race consciousness in understanding the social ordering of society. It is the theoretical foundation of a movement comprising scholars and activists who seek to dismantle racialized power structures and their relationship to race. CRT within public health asserts that racism is a fundamental cause of health and illness, and eliminating racism is then essential to achieving health equity. CRT has the power to reveal the complex ways structural racism not only influences HIV risk for Black populations, but also shapes the public health response to the HIV, the HIV epidemic itself, in which HIV services are designed and delivered. While there isn't a single canon of foundational principles for CRT, this diagram shows key tenets, widely accepted as the cornerstone of its thought and practice. They are presented here as discrete tenets, but they are interlinked and strongly co-constitute each other. This tenet of CRT holds that racism so deeply constitutes the social order, it is naturalized to most people. Therefore, racism is normal, not exceptional, and CRT sees racism as the common everyday experience of black folk fundamentally contributing to HIV risk environments and service access barriers. Thus, the focus of inquiry is not if racism occurs through accessing HIV services, but how is it structurally shaping the system that designs and delivers these services? Expanding concepts of racism beyond interpersonal acts of discrimination, CRT uses concepts of colorblindness, which claims that structures shaping individual behavior are race neutral. It further adopts merit rhetoric, asserting that all people have an equal opportunity to attain good health. HIV prevention and treatment decision-making is then a result of individual choice rather than racially discriminatory social systems that cultivate service access barriers. CRT further reveals the ways in which colorblind racism can show up in the clinical encounter. Although black people report experiences of racism as a disincentive to accessing healthcare services, inequitable treatment is often attributed to their perceived shortcoming, namely lack of compliance to prevention and treatment interventions and being less informed than their white counterparts. CRT holds that racism is a barrier to black people effectively engaging with services during the clinical encounter and situates this racism within larger epistemic, discursive, and social structures that sustain policies, practices, and logic shaping their interaction. CRT holds that concepts of race are a product of social thought and processes that differentiate groups of people based on physical attributes. CRT stresses that race is not inherent to biological, genetic, or cultural traits. CRT provides a framework to critique how social constructs of black people are taken up within HIV services and used to rationalize their poorer HIV outcomes. By emphasizing an imagined pan-black culture as the primary reason for increased HIV risk and suboptimal engagement in care, these concepts reduce the complex social realities informing individual behaviors to racially encoded cultural acts. CRT implicates public health in the uptake of these constructs within present-day service delivery structures across the cascade. As a prime example of this terminology is the use of the term HIV endemic, a standardized term used to refer to Black people at risk of acquiring or diagnosed with HIV within Canada's surveillance system. HIV endemic suggests that being Black means you are at risk for acquiring HIV, and that black people are inherently risky. It reduces risk to birth in or descendant from an African or Caribbean country. 
It further erases the ways racism shapes risk environments right here in Canada. Supposed risky sexual behaviors and social practices become a complex of implied racial traits that justify the difficulties or impossibilities for black people to optimally use services and achieve viral suppressions. CRT further demonstrates how historical representations of black people as being inherently diseased, deficient, and hypersexual are reflected in and informed by an HIV endemic terminology. Whiteness is also socially constructed, affording white people racial privilege that places their interests and perspectives at the center of what is considered normal and everyday. Understanding the multifaceted nature of racism requires deconstructing concepts of whiteness and white dominance and critically examining how material resources and conscious and unconscious ideas of white superiority are daily reenacted within HIV services across the care cascade. The extensive discourses on concurrent sexual partnerships and polygamy is commonplace in explaining racial, racial disparities in HIV prevalence. It further integrates a moralizing discourse by concluding that serial monogamous relationships are not only typical of white populations, they are the reason for their comparatively lower HIV prevalence rates. Because of the ways black is socially constructed, Monogamy and marriage are normalized as an archetype of sexual partnerships, inaccessible and undesirable to black populations. Additionally, the HIV care cascade outlines standardized sequential stages of medical care from HIV testing to viral suppression. This last stage becomes definitive of optimal health. While this delivery model facilitates access to life-saving treatment and effective prevention strategies, achieving viral suppression as the ideal state of health becomes a matter of individual choice. Decontextualizing Black pe people's HIV prevention and treatment practices from the social and structural factors shaping their related decision making. This not only reinforces racial constructs of Black people as risky and non-compliant, it often excludes them from discourses of undetectability, all while guising the racial privilege inherent to this concept. Although CRT gives race analytical primacy, it recognizes the intersectional nature of racial subordination and the ways that other social identities interlock with race. It surfaces the ways black people differentially access HIV services across axes of race, gender, sexuality, serial status, ability, immigration status, and other social locations. As one example, exposure categories used in Canada's HIV surveillance system namely the heterosexual endemic category, reduce black queer women to a heterosexual identity. HIV prevention services and resources informed by surveillance data subsequently promote a racialized heterosexism where it is assumed that all black women are heterosexual. However, we know that black queer women experience oppressions at the intersection of race, gender, and sexuality that uniquely shape HIV risk environments. Services positioning them as heterosexual then overlook their specific HIV prevention and treatment needs. Centering the perspectives, lived experiences, histories, and stories of marginalized people is a key tenet of CRT. Master narratives that dominate in public health reinforce notions of racialized people that are deficit-based and position ideas of the racially privileged as normal, natural, and rational. Counter storytelling is a CRT methodology that aims to disrupt master narratives and challenge the ideologies and perspectives of the dominant group. It does this by centering the experiential knowledge, histories, and perspectives of marginalized communities. Narrative as medium then becomes an important part of collectively constructing a social reality that highlights the ways in which oppression impacts the health and social lives of Black communities. In essence, the stories of those racially othered are not only legitimate forms of knowledge, they are necessary for the conceptualization, analysis, and teaching of racial subjugation. Within HIV research, Black communities are duly characterized at, at, as at risk and hard to reach for participation in research and prevention interventions. This is largely rooted in a deep-seated community distrust of health and research institutions, the terminology of Tuskegee continues to be salient in the consciousness of Black communities throughout North America, emblematic of historically unethical research practices and medical violence. This counter story situates the distrust of HIV for prevention research and programmatic responses by recovering the long history of institutional racism within public health responses in Black communities. 
A CRT approach requires that the problematic be reframed from black communities' distrust of the medical system to these institutions' trustworthiness. In this current public health and political moment, anti-black racism and its interconnections with the COVID-19 global pandemic are at the forefront of disciplinary conversations across the sciences. As we work to respond to the social and health inequities that they have produced and continue to sustain, it is imperative that we will not only redress all forms of anti-black racism, but we use a conceptual framing that speaks to the social realities of black communities and empowers them. Thank you.